Hello and welcome to Recruiter 360 TV with me, Toby Babb, and delighted today to be joined by Glenn Southern. Glenn, how are you? Brilliant. Great Good to see you. Here. Cheers. So, loads of stuff going on in your life at the, at the moment. Um, Glenn, for those of you who, uh, who I'm sure all know, uh, has had a stellar career in, in the recruitment industry as a, as a marketeer uh, and recently branched out on his own and uh, is building a business. Tell us a little bit more about what you're doing at the moment. So, yes, uh, after 14 years or so, I've decided to take the plunge and do it myself, uh, create a business called Two Ends, a little bit of a play on my own name which obviously gets spelt wrong a lot with one N, so I put two N's, <laughs> yeah, created yeah. two N's, <laughs> um, and basically we're, we're a marketing consultancy, uh, over the 14 years working with probably about 10 different brands directly, marketing was just not really understood. Yeah. Um, I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of recruitment owners who's, who did understand it and gave me the opportunity to, to grow businesses and drive sales, but um, there's a big, big gap in the industry generally. So, Created Two Ends has three branches really. Um, there's a kind of a startup phase just for recruitment businesses. As we know, there's hundreds and hundreds of them launching every year. Yeah, really. yeah. So, we're helping. 9,000 last year, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, huge number. Yeah. So, we're helping them just set up initially their, their brand and get them known. Um, we're working with recruitment businesses who are a little bit more established. Who might not have um, the more senior marketing team, but they have a good brand out there, but they're not leveraging the brand well enough to start generating the sales or internal headcount. Mm. So we're just typing up their processes there. And then we do a little bit of uh, mentoring and, uh, and recruitment based stuff for, for teams who are looking to grow and individuals who want to go from like a marketing executive level up to a manager level and hopefully onto a director level. Mm. I think it's an interesting thing that you touched on there where you said you know, to, to, uh, the marketing isn't necessarily helping the sales or the internal headcount and such like, which is one of the issues. You also mentioned there that you've worked with a couple of people who, who understood it, directors who understood the whole benefit of marketing. I think that's something which has always been quite interesting, isn't it, is whether it is a cost or a, or a profit and what it actually should do and where the ROI actually comes in of, of, of a marketing play. How do you tackle that issue? Uh, I agree. I think ultimately marketing has always been seen as, if you like, the, the colouring in department, uh, yeah. making sure it's got presentations ready for the consultants to send out there. But my approach has always been, you know, and it might have come initially, early in my career, as an insecurity to the role, as a way of having to justify my purpose with the business and marketing's purpose. But I think being completely outcome-led as a department, marketing department is key. Yeah. Find out what you need to achieve as a business from, from a sales point of view and how does marketing play a role in that. If the business wants to drive uh, margins up, if the business wants to increase repeat business levels from 65% to 70%, then the marketing department needs to know that, and yeah. then the marketing activity needs to drive that uh, to achieve those outcomes. If not, what happens, marketing just sits to one side yeah. and is a little bit reactive to, to the needs of the consultants, rather than working with them to help them meet their objectives. And the key, the key to doing that is planning. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of the businesses that um, I've worked with recently over a couple of months, huge businesses, big turnovers and small turnovers, they just haven't planned anything. So they don't know um, what they want from marketing. Uh, they know what they want from the business, they know what turnover they need to hit, what profit they need to hit, what employer headcount they need to hit to reach their targets. But they haven't worked out how marketing should be playing a role in that. Yeah. And it doesn't really just go for marketing either, it probably goes for IT in terms of what technology you're going to use because these are all chunky investments usually and you need to be able to say well if we're going to invest X amount we want to know that we're going to get Y and Z from it yeah, yeah. Um, so having that trust from business owners and consultants to say that we've got someone in place from a marketing point of view they've planned it out they've budgeted this is what they're expecting at the end and this is the impact we expect to have it on the bottom line is kind of key and that's yeah. the approach I've taken, there's always going to be a space for the branding elements, but that's kind of a given yeah. in marketing, I think. And I think a lot of recruitment businesses, especially now, they're doing that fantastically well with the 
technology and all the tools available, it's easier to create a brand than it ever has been. Absolutely. Um, but in terms of turning that brand into a profit driver and a sales enabler is a completely separate set of skills. Yeah, yeah. So talk to me about what those skills are. Um, I, I think it's taken a bit more of a top level approach. I think we've moved, uh, marketing as an industry has moved very, very niche in terms of the skills that are needed. Um, so, you know, back in the day, a digital marketer oversaw everything digitally. That's now split off into probably 10, 15 different disciplines in terms of social media, SEO, PPC, and things like that. And what is missing is that kind of generalist specialist, yeah. if you like, to take it all in one space and how to bring it together. Um, it's probably more project management, I think. Mm -hmm. Marketing is more project management. And at the moment, I'd say the majority of recruitment businesses, it's being managed by a managing director mm -hmm. or a CEO who've obviously got a lot of other things to do and probably self-confessed not being marketing specialists. They haven't had that experience. Where I've been lucky enough is I kind of started out as a generalist many years ago, back in 2004, and saw the whole scope of what marketing was like. I was involved in print advertising and things like that. Um, don't know what happened to that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's being able to take that whole approach and see how it all interlinks, I think. Um, I've been a very keen advocate of not doing one bit of activity and letting it happen. It needs to all integrate with everything else. So yeah. if you're doing a video campaign, it needs to be followed up with a blog campaign, which needs yeah. to be followed up with an email campaign and maybe a poll on the website. And it all needs to, to tie together to touch all those touch points. So I just think project management is, is key, mm. uh, but also making sure it is tied into a budget and yeah. a plan. So budgeting as a as a senior marketer, it should should be you know priority really. You mm. need to know how much you're spending. You need to know where you're spending it, and you know you need to know what the return. Where you're spending to get from it, 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 Exactly, yeah. it's it's very easy to to build a budget and say I need to spend all of this money. Yeah, yeah. But why? Yeah. Why do you need to spend this money? What what impact is it going to have on the business? Because ultimately, I see marketing as those you know impacting the three C's if mm. you like getting in more candidates, getting in more clients, and getting in more consultants to work mm. for the business. So mm. at the very top level, that's what the marketing should be uh, should be touching on, um, and it just needs to work out the activity, how to, how to go in there. I think another key point to it is that, you know, you need to be quite flexible in your approach. It's very easy at the start of January or whenever you do the planning to, to create a huge content plan and activity on it week and a month basis but but what that what that that kind of ha means happens is if you don't achieve something in that first month or two months is you get a bit downbeat about yeah. it um so i always think if you base your marketing on themes yeah you know what what do we want to be known for yeah. how the theme's going to play out yeah, yeah. Year. and those themes then stay the same and you can be flexible around the content and activity on a quarterly basis, just make sure you have milestones in place as well. What do we want to achieve at a certain point? And if we're not achieving it, then let's stop it and do something else. It's, yeah. the, it's the classic uh, fail fast type yeah, thing. Yeah. I think as a recruitment industry, we tend to kind of hold on to things that have always worked yeah. in the past. Yeah. I've been a little bit afraid of just trying something a little bit different. My, my mantra has always been the kind of ask for forgiveness rather than permission yeah, yeah, yeah. type thing and if, if things work they're brilliant if they don't you know you've tried it rather than sit there and think oh i wish i'd done this i wish i'd done that just do it yeah yeah just do it and see yeah. what happens as long as you think if i do this i want this to happen if it doesn't then that's fine yeah move on to something else the world's changing too much to to not try these new things you don't want to miss out on something because of it yeah absolutely I think that innovative, yeah, innovative nature of uh, of trying and testing and uh, and analysing is really critical to yeah. to a good marketing uh, you know, campaign or team or whatever you, you, you want to look at it. The other aspect is how involved you get your consultants, isn't it? Yeah. Um, 
And you know, some of the things I hear quite a lot of is that there's this sort of uh, battle between marketing and consultants, and sometimes yeah, the other consultants are, are uh, pressured into doing things or don't have the sort of faith in, in this, you know, consultants by nature are very short term sometimes, yeah. don't they? How have you dealt with some of that in the past, and where has it worked well for you? I think um, one size fits all approach just simply doesn't work. Mm. Um, and I think recruitment's changing in that respect from a from a KPI driven world where everyone needs to do certain things. It's it's recognising that some consultants are better at one thing than another. Mm. You know, there there will be some consultants who are brilliant on the phone and then spend it three, four hours, five hours a day on the phone gets them the results. Yeah. There'll be others who are absolutely excellent at crafting um, brilliant email messages and they get their results through that. Now what you've got is that there's consultants who are going to be brilliant mm. on social media. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be consultants who are brilliant at networking at events and running yeah. meetups yeah. funding. So I think it's you need to be close to the consultants. I've always um, I've always taken the approach of kind of hot desking around consultants' desks, finding out their challenges and seeing what works, what doesn't for them, and then and then just working out what is going to work for yeah. them. I don't think you can have company-wide initiatives of saying everyone needs to do a vlog yeah. a month because it isn't going to work. Yeah. But if you identify the champions in yeah. the business, I think that's key. Identify the champions, get them to do it. If they get the results, then shout about the successes. Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. about the successes internally. Because we work in a very competitive industry. Um, if someone's making money, ultimately, um, from doing a certain thing, then others are going to want to at least give it a go. Yeah. I think kind of creating and maintaining that competitive culture within the sales floor of things is key. I've, I've, I've done even, even silly little things in terms of trying to get the engagement of that. Uh, whoever does the best video job advert this week, decided by the marketing department, they get a £20 Starbucks voucher, yeah. or any other uh, coffee shop. <laughs> uh, um, but and, and things like that work yeah. in recruitment. So I think identifying the champions and shouting about the successes is, yeah. is, is key. And I've, d you know, I've, I've mucked that up lots before, yeah. is you try and just push out, you try and get everyone to do everything, no one does it, you feel a bit downbeat afterwards, and you don't try anything again, but if you just start talking to, yeah. to the consultants... It's that proactive approach, isn't it, of yeah. actually sort of, uh, rather than sort of sat there and waiting for things to happen, you got uh, to be a good uh, marketeer, will be interacting and looking and listening and asking good questions, which yeah. then gives you and sets the agenda for what's happening, because they're the guys who are getting, and girls who are getting the most impacts and the most actual knowledge of what their clients and candidates want to see. Well, that, that, that's, that's the other element of it, is, is don't silo yourself as yeah. a marketer or a marketing person with the recruitment industry. It's, it's, a, it's a very unique industry. Yeah. I think being involved in it as a, as a marketer is key. You need to know the sectors, you need to know the motivators of the candidates and clients because that enables you to tailor your messaging. Mm. Um, or from from a brand perspective, um, I think there's a there's a case that that marketing should be the ones who are kind of driving client meetings a lot of the time as well, mm. accompanying consultants on client meetings, showing them uh, the the brand equity of, of who they're working for and how it can add value and the exposure that clients are going to get by working with a company through whether it's. Uh, website hits a month, uh, whether it's the social media follows, the, the exposure that you can get. Consultants don't usually have that knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, but the marketing department does. So getting them to work together and winning those, um, winning that business is again, it's kind of moving marketing away from the more administrative uh, role to a more kind of consultative sales sales led role. But it's something I, I'd always push is marketing people get involved in the sales process yeah, as yeah. much as you can. And that can be from from client meetings, but also from the, the use of the CRM, yeah, uh, yeah. How, how the IT set up, because all of this builds into candidate and client experience, which you know, is a bit of an overused phrase type thing, but, but it's true. Um, so you need to know how every aspect of the recruitment business works, because at some point, someone's going to engage with it, whether yeah, yeah. it is the finance team when they get sent invoices or timesheets, um, whether it is the IT team when 
people receive emails, what the email signatures look like. They're tiny little things, but yeah. they all do add up to that that experience. That consistency, isn't it? it, it, it exactly. Yeah, exactly. So what you what you see is uh, as as you know, when you look at, uh, at some of the best brands and some of the best marketing in the industry, what do you see as some of the things that people are doing really well? Um, you know, not to blow parents and start a trumpet, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's the ones who are embedded in their industry now. I think it's the ones who, who really show an interest into uh, the, the people they're hiring and, and adding that extra value. There's no... Um, there's no candidate loyalty in recruitment generally now as much. I, I remember when I first started out, um, sending out paper surveys to, yeah. to candidates saying, are you registered with any other agencies? It's a question you just wouldn't ask nowadays because yeah. if the right opportunity is available um, at the right time or if someone is looking for a job, people have hundreds of options nowadays. I think the key is for those Again, a phrase I don't like, but I will use because everyone knows it. Those passive candidates mm -hmm. is when they're ready to make a change of decision. Who is the company they're going to choose? Front of mind, isn't exactly. It? Yeah. And the ones that are going to be front of mind aren't the ones who are who are spamming uh, jobs out every day on the on the website with vanilla messaging that that everyone else can see. It's the ones who are talking about their industry, who mm -hmm. are adding value through through knowledge, who are given opportunities to network peer-to-peer -peer type elements and things like that. One of the things that that I've advocated in the past is, is we're recruiters, yeah? So we stick to do doing what we do best, mm. recruiting, but why not use our candidate and client network and crowdsource them for, for the content, mm. get them to talk about the industry, yeah, and, we exactly. give, and we give them the platform then to to speak to their peers and you know build their own profiles, I, I think that adds a that adds a lot more value than than recruiters trying to talk about the latest developments in Java or JavaScript because that hasn't got any authenticity. Yeah, really. they have a basic knowledge and they and they should do as any good recruiter. But someone who's been a Java or JavaScript developer for the past 10, 15 years, that's going to add a lot more value. And if you're able to give the platform and get the knowledge out there. I, th I think that's uh, that's key, but yeah, the, the the companies that are really embedded within the industry are the ones who are gonna who are gonna fly. I would have thought in the next certainly three to five years. Yeah, yeah. and you see any sort of major innovations in the in the marketing sector? Um, I suppose everyone will say kind of the AI or machine learning learning space. I think. Um, being able to curate content quickly mm. and publish it is is going to move forward quite quickly. In terms of AI, I think it's probably overstated in the short term, but understated further down the line. The key is engagement still, and that's very hard to, at the moment, I think, uh, allow robots to do. Yeah. Things. That being said, I'm seeing a lot of movement in the kind of chatbot yeah, yeah. Uh, space. Uh, not the usual basic stuff says hello, says yeah. hello back type thing. I think that, that machine learning there is going to have an impact on recruitment. I, I, saw, I saw a stat actually recently, it was, it was something like 60% of um, people are actually more willing to engage with a, a chatbot on a website now than, than click a dial, dial number button or, or email. So, um, but it has to work, yeah. you know, the technology has to work there. Um, and if that can take some of the pain away from from the consultants and increase that uh, and the consumer, I guess as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. If you could get as far down the recruitment life cycle um, with technology as you possibly can without losing that human element, especially mm. at the at the higher end of recruitment, then I think that that's brilliant for everyone. Yeah. Um, it allows it allows consultants to be more consultative because yeah. there's very few consultants. Who I know who like doing the, yeah. the admin side of yeah. things, um, uh, but yeah. So AI chatbots are are gonna play a part, but I'm it might be a little bit old school, but I still think that uh, that human human interaction yeah, is key, and we still need to keep engaging. We yeah. still need to keep asking candidates and clients what they want, what they expect from a recruitment agency. Um, I wrote I wrote something uh, on it. Um, 
couple of months ago around, you know, we're still assuming far too much yeah. about what candidates and clients want, and we're not actually asking yeah, them yeah. as much. And if we we are asking, then we're not acting on the answers. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, that's that's a really critical part, yeah. isn't it? Actually, it's, it's uh, how much of that sort of. Uh, yeah, conversation is actually happening. How much are people thinking about right? Okay, we give people you know, marketing to me is understanding people's pain points and giving them solutions to those yeah. pain points. That's that's great content, right? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it will remain assumptive. I think that's a, yeah, that, that's a, that's probably where a lot of it still sits, isn't yeah. it? So trying to get that bit right so is is to me one of the great opportunities out there in the marketplace. Yeah, I, I, su- I suppose if we yeah you know, if we look at recent events type thing, if you look at the whole Facebook scandal if yeah. you like and things like that is that the data is there to, to find out what pushes certain people's buttons and things yeah. like that and then what content gets pushed out as a result of it and there's no there's no reason why that can't filter down to to our industry yeah. um, in terms of being able to push out and engage, engage with that Do you content. see that happening much in recruitment at the moment? So look if we look at um, you know, I've always been a keen sort of student of Tesco and Club Car yeah. and how that sort of works and how you know, Baby Club effectively put the right messages to the right people at the right time. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's probably an element of sophistication that, that maybe hasn't hit. You know, and I think probably you see some bits about around HubSpot and trying to sort of uh, create a journey a little bit more through marketing. Did you see that landing a little bit more in, in the space? I, I think so. Um, I use Amazon as yeah. my example a lot of the time you make purchases yeah, and then you get emails about yeah, yeah. Oh, you need some batteries etc yeah. and things like that but yeah I, do you know yeah, what people I people who hired this have also hired yeah, this one yeah, exactly. that's absolutely yeah. I, I, think it, I think it is happening a little bit more do you know what I think it, it, it probably was happening um, five six years ago as yeah. well but maybe the user hadn't caught up with the technology as much. Yeah, yeah. So I think like retargeting marketing, yeah. um, you know, when you get those those adverts that appear on the websites yeah. and you think, how'd they know about that? Yeah, yeah. Thing? And then you think about it and you work out how they do. I think that, that, that does happen. And I think there are there are some recruitment businesses um, out there who are um, you know appearing in various websites about new opportunities in certain places. I, I get them quite a lot from, from a few recruitment agencies just for the nature of me looking at, at how recruitment businesses are doing it. So I think kind of retargeting marketing and things like that works. The challenges um, that people have with that kind of stuff now is obviously the recent GDPR stuff is, mm. is how personal data kind of gets used and, mm. and, and things. So there might be a challenge there, but again, that's probably something that's probably hugely hyped up in the, in the short term and in the long term, um, it will even itself out. It, it was as if we never had any data privacy laws before GDPR came yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't, um, I don't think it's going to be a, a huge game changer, but yeah, certainly digital and remarketing will, will certainly play a role, I think. Yeah. Um, and and I, think, I think Facebook will um, make a bigger play as well. Uh, haven't seen it as much in recruitment anymore, um, probably over the past six nine months you can start posting jobs yeah on there now and the, the targeting you can do on facebook is uh is scary yeah um it you know probably verging on discriminatory in terms yeah, yeah. of some in, in terms of kind of interests and the def- different demographics you can target but it allows you to build the real key target market um i think the fear in the past was that there's always a Gray area between personal and, and work with Facebook, but Facebook's just a, a place you kind of go now yeah, a lot of the time. Yeah. So I think Facebook could, could play a part in recruitment. Certainly, I think it's taken, it's already eaten into the old LinkedIn groups, yeah. which uh, I, I think they exist on yeah. LinkedIn, but you'd never see them anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all those engagement groups are, are on Facebook. I think they're a lot more active or involved in a few and the conversations are a lot more active than they yeah, ever yeah. were on, on LinkedIn. That being said, with Microsoft behind them, I can I can imagine LinkedIn will um will accelerate Push that level. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so there's there's a couple more things just to sort of finish up finish up on Glenn. The you know, we were speaking beforehand about the whole fact that, that 
recruitment is improving and it mm -hmm. isn't quite so uh, so dark ages as it, as it no. was in the past and there's some people doing some really good stuff and I think you know more and more companies that I'm seeing are sort of investing more in marketing yeah. and getting it um, with that sort of improvement in uh, I guess people uh, committing to, to marketing how do you stand out um, by getting the basics right yeah I think um, you can invest all you want in the great technology and the new communication channels but if you um, if you're still not sticking to your promises at a, at a sales level mm. um, then all your hard work and your investment means nothing mm. it, it, you know it, it might seem a bit of a, a cop-out answer but I think I, it yeah, yeah. I, I think it's um, there's a lot of emperors new clothes in terms yeah. of uh, recruitment technologies and automation and things like that but you need to get those basics right uh, yeah. straight away and, and the basics are um, being honest with your candidates and clients doing what you doing what you say you're going to do yeah. on, on time and with relevance and and listening yeah um, so I, I think that's key um, but again it's having it's kind of putting marketing central actually to the to the business yeah. uh, obviously I'm biased that I'm going to say that but it does. It, it touches on it touches on everything. It touches on the way the the consultants go to market. It um, how they pick up the phone, how they uh, send emails, uh, how the receptionist picks up the phone, yeah. how how finance send out invoices. Every, everything like that is yeah. key. So knowing what you stand for and why you're doing what you're doing is yeah. is kind of key for me. I think if you haven't got that and you are completely driven by hitting a profit number or, or something like that, then don't bother investing in marketing yeah. type thing. If, yeah. if, if, that's, if that's your driver, then, then do it. But you'll get a lot further, a lot quicker, with yeah. a lot more credibility yeah. if you do put your brand central and your why. Yeah. Like central to that as well. That was a big part of what you've you know you achieved, didn't it? When you, when you work with a group that uh, that sort of grew to a yeah that stage on the I think it was the deal of the year, wasn't it? When it when it sold, yeah. A load of that was was the brand that was you know recognition and its name and its reputation. I think yeah. You know, when you when you talk about you want to pull stuff out to increase your profit, you can be looking very short sightedly about actually what it can do to your multiplier based off of the reputation your brand's been given. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that's key, especially for, for any recruitment business that's like looking for investment or an event yeah. type of thing, is that that is important nowadays. Yeah. Investors are looking at that. Um, I've been asked questions about it. You're, you're building a brand um, that needs to continue being an asset for the next three to five years post-event. Yeah. Uh, and reputation is key now. Yeah. You know the the size of the database isn't a big thing yeah. anymore um, because everyone has the same data yeah. effectively, whether it's on a CRM internally or whether it's yeah. on a LinkedIn and yeah. things like this. Yeah. So other things come into play, um, and it is a lot of reputation. People will look into the candidate and client experiences. They'll ring them directly, and you won't be able to tell them who to who yeah. to read. They'll, they'll they'll pick people randomly. So. I think that is key, and yeah, building that, building that brand uh, for the company you mentioned, that that came from nothing. There was no, there was no marketing department there when, yeah. when I started. Um, in a period of four years, you know, we went from a, a single brand in a single office to you know a multi-brand international opera, operation. But we we put things in place to engage with our our community. You know, we started going a little bit back old school, doing events uh, yeah. all around Europe and things. Um, and also building that internal brand, making making uh, an environment where people were, were proud to work and things like that. Because ultimately, the, the consultants are the brands. They're the they're the biggest advocate of the brand. So they need to really believe in the company and what you're doing moving forward. Yeah, excellent. So look, we'll finish off with one last question. Yep. My favourite one, which we ask everyone on the sh on the uh, on the show is the one bit of advice you give to someone, so yeah. either a marketer or a recruiter, and, and uh, around that whole subject of marketing. Yeah. What would be the one bit, one gem that you'd, uh, you'd provide? Um, not a gem, but don't do marketing if you're not going to plan it. Yeah. Uh, and the, re the reason I say that is that I hear so many times from companies and individuals that I've spoken to, um, 
over the past 14 years, not just uh, not just since I've been uh, running two ends, uh, they say marketing doesn't work. Yeah. My follow-up question to that is, well, what did you expect from marketing? Uh, what was your plan, what was your budget? Oh no, we've never had a plan or a budget. Mm. So how can you expect, or how can you judge something working or not if you, uh, if you don't plan it? So plan, plan, plan. Plan, 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 wonderful. Listen, Glenn, it's been wonderful speaking to you. Thanks so much for coming on today. Thanks, for Thanks to all of you for, for, for watching. Um, please do get in touch with Glenn and Two Ends if you're, if you're looking to increase your marketing and take advantage of everything that we've been speaking about today. And uh, we'll see you soon on another episode of Recruiter360 TV. Again, thanks ever so much. Thanks. Good to see you. Cheers.